Welcome everyone to the new phone. Got it. All right, let's get some Wi-Fi and uh, do the Q&A. Go find the password. So, so it's like, <laughs> can you help me out with the password? Do you know what it is? No. Do you, you don't know what the password is? I don't. Don't you frequent here? I don't. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. But you only put the password in once. So you know. No. Okay. It starts with a T. It starts with a T. All right, we're gonna go ask someone else. Thanks, Celia. <laughs> Good luck. Sorry. Here we go. Is it? Sorry. What's the Wi-Fi password? Tom Dumoulin and Captain. Oh, I need glasses. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um. So it's. Tom Dumoulin, all in capital letters, T-O-M-D-U-M-O-U-L-I-N, connect. Okay, let's see what happens now. This can take up to two minutes, is what it's saying, to connect. But falls into the puddles of the lake. Human as whiteness is witness. Sticks and stones may break my phone, but um, uh, you're not saying anything negative to me. Hold, it won't hold you back. It won't hold me back. It won't hold me back. Okay, Q&A time. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's, let's roll out the, the night that chills me inside and turns the limbs to major wings. Okay, so we're back with a new phone, a new setting, the sun is setting, it's been a full day, but for you guys, I got the answers to your questions. Question one, just to recap, we have, what did you do before joining the program? So I told you about my bachelor's education and how I was doing clinical research throughout that time. I started in the second year, it was at BC Children's Hospital, it was with the Division of Pediatric Cardiothoracic and Vascular Surgery. Um, so I published a couple of papers there, as well as uh, with the Division of Nephrolo Pediatric Nephrology um, presentations and so on. Um, and from there, I got a job. Uh, hey, got a job at, at the Division of Adult Neurosurgery at Vancouver General Hospital. Uh, sorry, I just lost for a second. Vancouver General Hospital. And that was as a clinical research coordinator. So I helped to uh, create that position. It wasn't there before, and they recruited me to, to do that there because they had it at the, at the Children's Hospital. And now they were wanting to have it there. And so that had, uh, in short, uh, needless to say, a lot of clinical research experience before coming to this program. What was the pivot point for me, though, and I, I think a key, a key part in, uh, in getting here, was my volunteer global health uh, research and work uh, along the Napo River in Peru. Um, if you want to learn more about that, I'll put a link in the description below of the website that uh, we have with the project details and so on. Um, very interesting stuff, but yeah, that's kind of what made me know for sure that that was the path I wanted to take rather than a more clinical research perspective. Um, second question, what are your main interests in terms of global health? Well, hmm, main interest. I'm going to capitalize on the plural here. So humanitarian aid is one. Uh, another one is maternal and child care. Hence a lot of the pediatric clinical research experience I have. Um, and then sustainable um, sustainable development. I don't want to call it development, but really from what we've been learning, just the idea of being able to hone in on locally sourced 
uh, knowledge for locally found problems. Um, and you know, so the idea of taking a sustainable approach when you're helping uh, Im improve the health uh, state of a place and location, a community or otherwise. Um, so very much a, a holistic perspective, which naturally will take in a lot of points of view, but I think, I guess, as an interest would be the critical analysis of international development, um, humanitarian aid projects, and management in general of these projects. So, yeah, that's the interest. Humanitarian aid, um, maternal and child care, or health, and development project management and critical analysis across the board. Uh, what made you want to pursue the Maastricht exchange? Well, believe it or not, I actually didn't want it originally. I actually came into the program thinking I wouldn't uh, do it at all. Um, but essentially, I just realized I had always wanted to go on exchange during my undergrad and, and didn't, uh, having you know spent the time devoted to clinical research and other activities, uh, and found this the opportune time to kind of capitalize on both a truly global experience in this global health learning process as well and more, more importantly to me was the uh, specialization I chose was only at Maastricht and uh, what I came to learn actually was that that specialization being implementing innovations at global scale is based on the theology of a discipline in sociology called science and technology studies which was birthed and originated here at Maastricht University so all the the specialist top of the line education and otherwise for that is here and it's truly where global health is is redirecting itself when you when you take a critical analysis standpoint of the workings of it the un who or otherwise um these are the people that kind of critique those kind of things and things that are, are what we take for granted the normalized uh, aspects of our socially constructed methods in global health and how we can then improve on that. And so that just completely resonated with me on top of the fact that Maastricht specifically is very central in Europe. So then um, you can balance work and travel to go uh, to nearby places for a, a relatively cheap price. Like just next week, I'm going to London for uh, 18 euros. It's one way because I'm, I'm leaving, but nonetheless, I mean, that's pretty fantastic. So I'm gonna go see a friend there. Uh, so all that together is why I chose the exchange. Mm. So what have you been working on since you've been there? Uh, actually, well, and one more thing. This is crucial because I think a, we were debating in terms of an ethical dilemma of uh, things that we'll be learning and doing in India and if we were doing in Canada. It, it came up in conversation among some of, the, some of the students. And I think you can't take away from the experiential learning that takes place, just living a daily life here in Netherlands and in Europe. Um, and seeing a very different perspective of how, how to do things. It's, it's, it's a, not, not very different, but it's in subtle ways that it all adds up and, and, and I think builds you as a, as a more well-rounded global health professional, uh, which I think is, is critical for the kind of work you would probably be doing, uh, even if you stay in Canada. I mean, at the end of the day, you're, it's about international relations in one way or another. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess unless you're doing clinical research, then perhaps not, but anyways, then maybe this wouldn't apply to you, but that's why I'm doing it. So, experiential learning. Okay, I guess summarize why Maastricht uh, experiential learning. The specialization is, is only here and um, and seeing and uh, seeing Europe. So yeah. What have you been working on? Question number three. Uh, four. Four. What have you been working on since you've been there? Well, mostly it's been the studies. So, so realistically, the studying, the traveling. There was. A window of opportunity to do to implement um, a branch of a 3D medical printing uh, NGO, not for profit NGO, from, that's based out of Toronto. Here, uh, it just there wasn't exactly the market for it in a lot of ways. In other ways, it just wasn't the right opportunity for me, so I, I chose not to uh, continue pursuing that. But that was a thing, and so I, I did that for a bit. Uh, had had I uh, seen seen that aligned I guess better with, with what I'm looking for from this experience this program and uh, what I'm going to do coming out of this program I probably would have pursued it further but it just didn't work out in that way so that's so nothing against program but anyways so that's one thing I could could have and did do there are many other opportunities of things you can pursue while you're here um, but mostly I mean realistically the culture is really just about focus on learning while you're in class and and that experiential learning uh, with the people here socializing with people from different countries because Maastricht University has people from across Europe, um, even an American and a Canadian. Uh, so it's great. Really, really for me, it was more on that end. And so that's what I've been doing mostly. Also check out the blogs if you want to see more. Uh, so, da -da -da. 
Number six, five, four and five. Uh, how do you think the exchange slash the program will benefit you in your future career in global health? Well, it already has uh, in that my internship um, I've just gotten confirmed is as an advocacy intern with MSF Canada. So I'll be going back and quite literally applying these critical analyses uh, that I've been learning about and how to unpack the normalization of, in this case, corporate social, corporate social responsibility profiles of extractive industries, which as we know are a prolific or have a, have a stronghold in Canada for their headquarters um, due, to very, due to various reasons, and their uh, effects on environmental health in low and middle income countries where MSF might be going there. I think someone knows me. Yo! <laughs> That's cool. Uh, yeah, so it, it already has. Uh, and, and how specifically then? It's, it's having these, this wet way of thinking. It's very much, I want to emphasize this, this stream is not about having per se a marketable skill set, uh, jo job skill set. You do, you absolutely do with management and so on. But it's very, you have to spend it the right way and you have to definitely put in the, the work to, to get that out of it. The main focus is about a critical way of thinking of life and how the world works and I think that cannot be underemphasized the importance of that because yeah you'll be you'll be kind of like a salmon going upstream but at the end of the day I mean isn't it about trying to get the most optimal health outcomes in the world and if that's what it is for you that's what it was for me and that's why I chose this program and why I think and so far has helped me in my career leaving this program um, what's been the highlight of this experience <laughs> Where do I start? What? Gosh, I'm gonna choose one thing, one megalithic, singular, ephemeral, temporal moment in time that encompasses a highlight of this entire thing. Gosh. Um, I think it's been the, the faculty and the students at the university. They've, they've challenged, we, we've challenged each other, really, to learn and grow and become better professionals and people, uh, both inside and outside the classroom. And, and uh, that component, I think, is very well capitalized on by the educational pedagogy involved. So you have your problem-based learning as you do in McMaster, but then you also have seminars where it's really open discussion, um, uh, so slightly different in that way. Uh, and you don't create your own learning objectives, you just, you, you, you each lead a session. Anyways, it's just sort of all-encompassing in that way. So really that would be the highlight of it all and how then that translates to the travels even and and I, I, I think about things differently as I go along and sort of incorporate that yes um, what are three things you've learned three things I've learned three things I've learned I'll just put it down to the modules first medical mobility so again critically analyzing the, the importance of considering local knowledge and what that means uh, two uh, health crises that's module two so that would be looking at what defines a crisis, questioning the very preface and premise of the entire concept of health crisis and humanitarian aid and what it addresses and you know results-based management. And so like, is the crisis really just the tsunami that hits the coasts and teeming shores of New Orleans or Japan or soon Vancouver, unfortunately, it's gonna happen. Is it just that and then when people are safe, that's it? Or is it the disruption of social life? and? you know, the, the social aspect of that. So there's that. And then lastly is medical mobility. So now you've created an innovation and it's worked successfully in one place. How are you going to scale it up and transfer it around the world um, having used the knowledge from the first two modules? So those would be the three things I learned and are key to this, to this program. Um, any advice for future students considering the exchange? Everything I just said. What do you hope to do after graduating MSF? And then after that, I really, it's more, I do want to keep working with humanitarian aid organizations, as I mentioned. Um, I think that's a, a field that has a lot of potential for, uh, I mean this in the best possible way, because clearly it's, it's as good as it's ever been, but for improvement. Um, that, and again, honestly, my, my interest. So humanitarian aid, uh, child mat uh, maternal and child health, and international development projects and management. And so I see working with MSF and the Red Cross as great ways of doing that. Um, and ideally then from there going into moving into more a political aspect after having 
more of that real on the field, boots on the ground, uh, managerial middle ground, sort of work my way up and kind of bring that experience up with me uh, as as I go to maybe more, yeah, WHA, WHO oriented or Government of Canada oriented kind of job. Uh, that would be ideal. But it's very much as it goes, um, do your best and forget the rest. But it's very much as it goes, kind of like today. You know, you, you, you roll with it, you have, you, you have what you want, and uh, you have to be on your feet, flexible, agile, problem solving is key. That, again, school doesn't teach you, it's, it's very onus on you, um, and incorporating that into your life. And that's kind of where I, I see this, uh, this path taking me. If you have any more questions, anything at all, please let me know. I'd love to take you out onto another tour of Maastricht uh, and show you, yeah, and show you another beautiful scene while answering those questions. If you have enough, just comment below or uh, email me or email the program. Let them know because I don't know if my Ma McMaster email will be active after I graduate. I don't know when you might be watching this, but uh, definitely, definitely comment below or email. Uh, the, the program and let them know to ask me these questions I'd love to answer them uh, yeah hope that was useful hope that was informative and I really hope to see you in Maastricht uh, or hear that you've been sometime in the future take care